Yeah, go back to the previous slide. So, as uh, a question I could ask, what layers it operates, uh, each firewall operates, or packet filter firewall operates in these three ways? Okay, so the second category of firewall is called the stateful inspection firewall. Uh, you might have experienced uh, something like when you try to download some movie from the internet or something like that, uh, you will say your uh, bandwidth uh, or your usage has been exceeded for today, come after say 24 hours to continue the download process, right, if you have used anything like that, uh, isn't it? Uh, which means someone is tracking how much you have downloaded from their server. Right, so uh, which was which would not be possible with a packet filter firewall. Why? Because it decides on a per packet basis. Right. So if you're downloading a huge file or a movie from the server, you are downloading as a sequence of packets. So the this kind of the egress thing, the firewall over there keeps track of how many packets are leaving that network. Okay, going to a particular IP address. So it has to keep track of how many packets are going towards that IP address. Right? So it has to maintain the state information, how much each IP address has downloaded from the server. Why you do not want to dominate uh, the connection? Because if you keep downloading and they don't limit how much you download in a particular day, then you can really what? download what, whatever you can, right? So the others, because the bandwidth of this network is fixed, so the others cannot really use all the bandwidth. So you want to be fair enough to all the users in the internet. So sometimes, most of the time, the free uh, movie people, all these people, they limit how much you download from their server. Um, is YouTube like that? YouTube sometimes, uh, it doesn't really tell you that, but uh, it's not really, I, I don't think they track on a per uh, user IP address basis, uh, but it's sometimes slow. That's because very, some, several people are trying to access it. But they are also making it a pay view for some uh, things, so some videos. So mostly this is like a pay, uh, some, some site that you pay to watch the movie? The pay sites uh, normally don't do this because they know how to control the traffic. Normally the free sites control, do this because they don't want someone to dominate and block everyone else from using it, right? So that's where they have to really track how much each user has downloaded. Hmm. Okay? So that is one use of a state full firewall because you have to remember, look at the packets, store some state information about the packets, how many bytes has been sent to the packet. And some other possible attack that you could prevent with the state full firewall is going to be uh, uh, like uh, uh, what is called a sin flood attack, which means again it has say a server. Uh, to which multiple clients are trying to set up a connection. So in the network class, you would have to go through a TCP connection establishment process where the clients have to establish a TCP connection to each server. So it's like uh, a doctor is there and patients are calling a doctor to fix up appointments, right? So if you call uh, from several numbers and make some fake appointments, and kind of fill up the calendar of the doctor. When a genuine client calls up the doctor and tries to make an appointment, if the appointments are full, then the client is denied at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a denial of service attack. So that's analogous example. Nowadays, that's why some doctors make you to call the day before you really go there to confirm the appointment, otherwise they charge you that money if they don't go, if you don't go. Okay? So, like that, uh, if you have a server, we have a firewall protecting the server. The firewall can really monitor how many connections each client is trying to make to the server. Because, as I said, these four has to be unique. So from a particular IP address, we can open several ports okay, from the client side and try to connect to the same server at the same port number. 
right? Because you can open at this particular client at port 81, another port 82, another port 83, and so on, all targeting a particular server at a particular port number. So these three can be the same, only the client port number can be different. Okay, so as long as even one is different, that's a unique TCP connection. So each client can request or try to establish multiple TCP connections to a particular server. Right? So you don't want that to happen because then one client can misuse it and establish multiple connections. So what happens with each connection? Like the doctor sets up a time, like the that's the resource the doctor sets up for you. The server allocates some resources like the memory, the capacity, processor speed, uh, resources, all those things. They are tied up with that connection. So as the number of connections grow, those resources are tied up. So if a genuine connection request comes, that connection request is denied. Okay, so it's like a denial of service attack. So a stateful firewall can keep track of how many connection requests are coming from each client to a particular port number. Okay, so that way they can it can protect the servers from being attacked or being exposed to denial of service attack. So to do all these things, you cannot use a packet filter firewall because a packet filter firewall doesn't remember what packets it allowed to get inside. So it has to know from which client IP address all these packets are coming so that it can block those IP addresses after a while. Okay. And uh, what else you could do? Uh, and also there is something called session hijacking which that will stop today. Uh, so th these are two attacks which we just discussed, right? Not attacks. The first is trying to restrict how much you're downloading. The second is trying to prevent what is called a SIN flood attack. A SIN flood attack means you're trying to establish multiple TCP connections. So that connection request packets are called SIN request packets. Okay? So these packets that are using to establish connections are called SIN messages or SIN request packets. The third attack is called a session hijacking attack. So what does that attack mean? So let's say you have a client and server communicating. Okay? Uh, as I said, these four quantities have to be unique. So in addition to these four things, this TCP connection will have what is called a sequence number that is unique at both sides, which means the packet sent by each side will have a sequence number. So packet sent from here will have a sequence number starting with 100, 101, 102, and so on. The sequence numbers do not start from 1. That's a different story. But let's say a sequence number start like this. The other side can start with sequence number 1000, 1001, 1002, and so on. They can be independent. So actually, the six quantities define that connection. Okay? So someone who is trying to really intercept this communication and try to send their own packet, say there's an attacker who tries to send his own packet to the server, okay? he can know the client IP address, port number, server IP address and port number. But he has to also know what? The sequence, sequence number that the server is expecting from the client. Because the server will know what the next expected sequence number from the client. If the next expected sequence number is say 105, and if something else comes to the server, it, as long as it fits within a window of expected sequence numbers, the server is going to buffer the packet. But if the next expected sequence number is 105, and the, serve, and the attacker is sending something that is say 40,000, it doesn't really fit within the window, right? So such packets have to be dropped, right? Because why? Someone is trying to guess what is the next expected sequence number at the server. Because if they can manage to guess correctly what the expected sequence number the server, as I said, they can do IP spoofing. So the attacker can make the packet to come from this IP address, appear to come from this IP address. Port number is also known. These two are also known. So if the server, if the attacker can correctly guess what is the expected sequence number, then he can really what is called hijack the session, which means he can start sending the packet to the server and increase the expected sequence number. For example, if the expected sequence number is 105 and he manages to find it out and he keeps sending packets starting with that sequence number, after a while this will increase, say, to 205. 
Now the genuine client is sending a packet with the expected sequence number 105. Then such packets will be dropped by the server because the sequence number has been shoot up by the attacker, right? It initially it was expecting 105 and the attacker managed to guess it and find it out. So he starts sending packets and increase the sequence number expected at the server. Now a genuine client tries to contact the server with the original expected sequence number which is 105. Now that doesn't fit within the expected window because the attacker has hijacked the session and has increased the sequence number expected at the, or changed the sequence number expected at the server side. Okay? So you should not let an attacker to be able to guess it correctly. They will not be able to guess it right away. What they will do is they will send several packets with different sequence numbers the server will reply for a packet that comes to the right sequence number because as part of a TCP connection you have to acknowledge for a packet that comes to you. So when you acknowledge, you kind of indicate that you got the right sequence number. So when you acknowledge, what happens? Again, the attacker will be able to intercept the connection and find out the acknowledgement is coming. So which means they will know that they have found the right sequence number. So what you should do, you should prevent the attacker from guessing it, which means you should not let the packet to the server. The firewall standing in between has to filter such packets that come with an arbitrary sequence number. Which means what you have to do? You have to know if there's a TCP connection going through you, that's a, the firewall. It has to know the all these details, the IP address of the client, the port number of the client, the expected sequence number on the client side. Similarly, the expected sequence on the server side. So all the six quantities have to be remembered by the stateful firewall for each TCP connection going through it. Okay? So it's like a client going through this stateful firewall to access a server. So the, all the packets have to be monitored by this firewall and it has to remember the state information. That's why it's called a stateful firewall. The state information is what here? These four on the top of it, the sequence number at both sides. So if this firewall sees a packet coming from this IP address, but it's a fake IP address, proof IP address, you know, but with an arbitrary sequence number, that is not the expected sequence number at the server side, the firewall should not allow the packet, because if it allows the packet, it may have some malicious code in it, and that may kind of damage the server. So the firewall should filter such packets that doesn't meet the expected sequence number at the server side for the client. Okay? So that you can drop such, uh, uh, such attacks you know, that could be caused to these packets. So these are you know, some of the attacks you could prevent using a stateful firewall, which I have explained here, but uh, this is the details of it. Even though know, this tells what it is, this is the details. So these are all again. I will, when I teach a network I course, I normally cover all these things in a separate chapter called Network Security. Uh, so there we will talk much more. This could itself take like a class on its own. So I try to kind of do a brief overview of it. Okay? But uh, go through it. If you are still not clear, you can ask me. Uh, as I said, I will try to post some videos, but again, I cannot guarantee